Hello, my name is Emily Stackwitz. Uh, I am a rising sophomore at Moraine Valley Community College, hoping to take the pathway program over to University of Illinois. Uh, I'm majoring in mechanical engineering and I want to share this presentation on my radioactive plating robot. Uh, this presentation and uh, work provided within it was done through the Community College Internship Program or the CCI program with the Department of Energy uh, under the mentorship of Noah Kerfman and Chris Anderson. Uh, without further ado, let's begin. So to begin, we have our big problem at hand. The particle accelerators here at Fermilab can be a little bit cumbersome in the sense that they give off a very slight amount of radioactive dust. Uh, and although this is already monitored and taken care of uh, quite well, it can be a little expensive and time consuming. Uh, right and now, at the moment, we have yearly cleanings uh, in which people will come in and shut down the accelerators and kind of clean in every nook and cranny, uh, just to once again prevent that uh, buildup of hazardous radioactive dust. Um, our solution to this, in theory, would be to get a radioactive cleaning robot that can be used to attract and contain the harmful dust. Um, the hope would be to use this year-round to make sure there's a consecutive constant cleaning uh, and either minimize or completely abolish the yearly cleanings. Of course, time is money, so uh, we really, really want to allow for researchers to have more time working on the uh, research and projects at hand. The functionality of this robot is not that complex, uh, a lot, lot easier than you'd think. Uh, at the moment, we are thinking to have it distribute what is called tough guy powder. This powder is a mixture of uh, different oils and powders. And what this does is it gets dropped down and it works kind of like a magnet for dust. Uh, it attracts everything to be combined with the powder. Uh, that way the robot can drive forward, uh, potentially over the substance to be vacuumed up. Uh, and then the powder dust combination would flow through the air into the dust reservoir. Uh, and within this dust reservoir, we're hoping that the dust and powder combination will settle within it. Meanwhile, the air will go through the fan, through the baffle chamber, uh, and out the exhaust. Uh, it's important to have this little baffle chamber, by the way, because the dust can settle within it. As previously stated, the radioactive dust can be a little harmful when breathed in. Uh, and allowing for that chamber will serve as a secondary safety measure for our fan and filter um, combination. Uh, some interesting facts about this is that it does have a removable dust reservoir. Uh, this can be emptied out through a back hatch. Uh, the back little area will flip down in kind of like a panel to become a ramp, uh, and the reservoir is on wheels. Uh, allows just for easy removal. Uh, meanwhile, we also have a hatch on top that we can open up to refill that powder. It isn't just a one-time thing. Uh, it allows for uh, constant reusability. Uh, with all of that, it's a little complicated to understand at first. So I'm hoping to take you through kind of my concept sketches to lead towards how I made the decisions I did in the overall final product. On this slide, we have our first concept sketch. Uh, you can see on the top left of these little first photo over here, we have our powder distributor. Um, this would, of course, have that tough guy powder, and it would kind of uh, drop down a shaft and shoot out. Uh, it would shoot to the front over here. Uh, meanwhile, the robot would kind of drive over it, of course, and it would go all the way up here to our little fan and drop down into the dust reservoir. Uh, you'll notice over here the battery uh, is sitting. We just kind of shove it around where we could, uh, so expect to see that move around as we go. Over on this right photo, we have a... Uh, close-up of the brush nozzle that would go on the dust reservoir system. Uh, this is going to have little brushes to kind of maintain that contact with the ground. And during the conceptualization of this part of the project, we thought to maybe have a winding spool to kind of lift up this little brush uh, hose mechanism. The reason for that being is that we realized that in the tunnels, not everything is perfect. Uh, and if there were, were to be water flooding within the tunnels, which is very common, we want to be able to uh, kind of retract this and protect the overall systems within it. Uh, you'll notice that we kind of lose this concept as it isn't necessarily needed uh, to be more efficient with our materials, we kind of uh, avoid using it later on. Over here, we have another iteration of our uh, complete design. Not much has changed. Uh, you'll notice the battery has shifted. Uh, it'll continue to do that. Uh, we noticed that it was in a very inconvenient space, very hard to reach. Uh, so this will be avoided placement over there uh, later on. Uh, another big addition to our concept model over here is the baffle system. Here you can have the dust kind of go out, or uh, the air go out with the dust. 
Uh, it's important to have this also facing upwards to make sure that the airflow does not necessarily disturb any dust that's possibly either on the ground or the wall surrounding it. Uh, over on the right, we have our first sketch of one of our subsystems. This would be the drivetrain and custom attachment hardware. Um, the reason why I include this is just because it is the first step to the engineering process, uh, the first step of the entire ordeal of this in which we kind of bring the project to more of a, a realistic state. Uh, you'll notice it's on a piece of 80-20 strut, uh, just a really versatile piece of uh, metal that we can kind of attach a lot of unique hardware to. Over on this slide, we have a couple depictions of what I wanted the baffle system and uh, dust reservoir system to look like. Uh, on the top left here, you can see we have a removable dust reservoir within a totally uh, encapsulated area, hoping to have a little latch or hinge that you can kind of pull at this and uh, close the area up. Uh, over here, we have our little hose attached to our little nozzle, and we're kind of hoping to keep it spring-loaded to keep it really, really taut with the ground. Uh, you can see that slightly better depicted over on this right side area. Uh, in which those springs are kind of attached to it. Over on the left here, we do have another depiction of the attachment of this. Uh, this was made before I realized there were such things as hose clamps. Uh, originally, we thought it was a threaded base on this hose here, but it was not, so uh, this uh, method of attachment was dropped later on. Over in the very, very bottom left, we have this image of a brush within a channel. Uh, the reason why I kept this image in here specifically was it's important to realize that when working in radioactive environments, we need to have all of our parts be easily replaced and decontaminated or just replaced entirely. Um, it's very, very important that we make this efficient. If we had to take apart the entire project as a whole just to uh, replace something as small as a brush, it wouldn't be very cost effective. Uh, so leaving escape routes for parts such as this are key to uh, maintaining overall efficiency. Over on the bottom right here, we do have uh, a picture of our fan encapsulation. Uh, I was just kind of hoping to put the fan and filter next to each other just to make sure that we have that nice taut seal, uh, make sure that nothing gets through that we didn't really want to get through. A uh, main reason for having this casing also is to prevent that fan from jumping around within the system overall. Over here on this slide, we have a couple iterations of we, what we want that brush nozzle to look like. Uh, once again, while thinking about this, we realize that there is deviations in the ground, different dips and grooves ranging up, up to one to two inches. Uh, that being said, we want to make sure that we can maintain that contact with the ground. Uh, over on the left here, you can see a couple examples, hinges, you know, compressible hoses, uh, just to make sure if there was a dip or hole in the ground, it would be able to get in there. Uh, we ended up choosing over here this top right image. Um, we ended up choosing this one uh, that had a set of very small multiple moving brushes, uh, kind of on like a spring system, just to force that contact with the ground. That way, if there were dips of any sort, whether it be on the side, middle, or the other side, it would always maintain that contact. And of course, this contact is very necessary to agitate the dust and kind of pull it into the air to be sucked up and cleaned very properly. Over on the slide, we just have more iterations of it, uh, a couple failed designs. Uh, and the reason why I also include this is that if you notice, the previous design we chose was uh, the third iteration. Um, oftentimes with the engineering process, the first one thing that you come up with isn't your final thing. And the last thing that you come with also isn't your final product. Choosing pros and cons from every individual part is very necessary and sometimes the process doesn't go as planned. Um, so it's nice to kind of acknowledge that, you know, you can go through multiple cycles and settle on something that you previously designed or may not have designed yet. On this image, we have a close-up of how we wanted that specific system of the moving brushes to work. In the top left, I have the first iteration in which it would kind of be in an H-shaped enclosure uh, that would allow the brushes to move up and down and not side to side. Uh, meanwhile, a spring would be attached to uh, make sure that constant pressure would be down towards the ground. However, this felt a little inefficient, a little buggy, just because the spring could compress on itself, as kind of mentioned that bottom of the image. Um, if it were to compress on itself, it could cause further issues and not work as intended. The solution to that would be our design on the bottom right side, uh, design number two. This would be a bolt and spring combination. The way that this would work is that the spring would be wrapped around that shoulder bolt, uh, and it would allow for the brush to move up and down on a very rigid structure while still having that spring in place to make sure that it still is held down to the ground. Uh, another reason why we chose this is that it's very simplistic while getting the job done. And it's also very efficient. 
Uh, by adding that spring on top of the bolt rather than separated, uh, we can prevent any uh, further modifications to design which would up the manufacturing costs. On this slide, we have another iteration of our overall design. Uh, the main reason for including this is that I wanted to put a bar and switch mechanism across the entire robot. Uh, originally, we were thinking for this bar to kind of serve as a way for the robot to get to know its environment. Uh, when making any automated uh, type of drone or robot, it's very common that it will bump into things. Uh, we we're kind of hoping that this bar would sense when the robot would bump into a wall and tell the robot to turn around in this direction or perhaps a different direction and kind of troubleshoot its surroundings. Uh, however, this is a little inefficient because if there were anything other than a wall, let's say a protruding object, if it were to run into that, the robot would not uh, understand what it's hitting, it would not detect that, uh, so we kind of swapped this out for a pressure plate paneling system later on. Over on this slide, we have a couple images, starting from the leftmost image. This is the final design of our overall inner workings. Uh, you'll notice that everything is kind of on top of each other, and this is very, very intentional. Uh, by having things overlap and rest on one another, we could kind of force a very rigid uh, structural integrity. Uh, by having that, of course, we can add more bolting areas and just kind of keep everything in place. That way nothing shakes around or moves in an unintended manner. Uh, in the middle, we have kind of a spinning brush image. Uh, while looking at the powder distributor, I realized that the, that the powder was being just dumped on the floor. No one really wants that. That once again goes against our uh, efficient nature and trying to keep everything as efficient and cost effective as possible. Um, so our hope was to kind of use that rotating brush to force the powder out in a very even manner. Uh, on the right, we have an alternate version of that in which it kind of uses a seed spreading motion in which kind of a fan-shaped motor would be spinning and the powder would be thrown on top of it to kind of force everything outwards. However, this would be also rather inefficient just because there, it's a very uncontrolled structure. It would kind of be like spraying out towards the sides, uh, once again going against our overall goal here. So we ended up choosing the middle one. This next image just kind of displays a, a better understanding of how everything would start. Uh, of course, starting at our power distributor, a conveyor belt system would scoop the tough guy powder down into a shaft where it would be evenly distributed by the rotating brush onto the ground. The robot would then drive over it, in which it would be carried into the dust reservoir to settle in here while the remaining airflow goes through the fan and baffle system out through the exhaust. Um, you'll notice that the exhaust is tapered outwards. Uh, this is actually a very, very important detail. Uh, when designing the system, it's important to have the uh, air velocity kind of uh, slow down upon exiting the robot. Uh, by tapering this outwards, we can have a larger surface area in which slows down the overall velocity. So just a key little thing to uh, notice there. In this image, we have a closer look at the removable dust reservoir. Uh, I had kind of hoped to put this on wheels just to make sure it could slide out easier. Uh, originally, we had left a dip in this overall wheel well. Uh, just to make sure it stays in there nicely, but this ended up actually causing further issues down the line and was removed very swiftly. Uh, over down here in this bottom area, we had a sliding door. Of course, if we want this to be removable, we need to be accessible as well. Uh, this sliding door was not incorporated because it was a little too inefficient for our liking, and we like things to be very, very efficient. That is our keyword of the day. Back here, we can see that we kind of changed out that sliding door for a little ramp on latches. Uh, we really like this design because it served two purposes for that back area and kind of made for a more smooth mechanism. However, with that being said, we kind of need the, the pressure plates over it to be removable or perhaps accessible to get through one way or another, just to make sure we can get to that electrical enclosure with all of our parts and, of course, that dust reservoir. Uh, originally, of course, our just bars is not a good idea because it doesn't cover the overall area. So I thought to maybe put a pressure plate on kind of a hinge that can be lifted up. Uh, however, this could serve as a more of an issue than one would think, because if it were to run into a wall, it could be pushed up rather than hitting the limit switch is intended to let the robot know that it's going the wrong way. Instead, we chose to switch this out with an overall holster that would hold the panel uh, downwards into the area that could be lifted up to get to the uh, much needed accessible areas. Of course, with this comes other, uh, other design flaws of, in which it could cover up the overall bagging, so that, of course, we had to adjust those other parts. 
Um, one design flaw also being with this is that the top is not covered. However, gravity accounts for that playing staying in place. Uh, of course, if this project were to, let's say, go down a very, very steep slope, that panel could potentially fly out. But um, if that happens, we have a little, little bigger issues at hand. Now that was a lot of, uh, a lot of con conceptual sketches, uh, a lot on the plate. So hopefully these CAD models will now be much easier to understand than previously and give a little light towards those conceptual sketches provided. Starting off with these images, we have our drivetrain on the basic structure. This was the first thing that we did and the first step towards the reality of our project. Here you can see a little bit of those uh, steel structures in place. That is 80-20 strut. Uh, that was just to get an overall outline of the project to stay within our design requirements. Uh, here you can see the wheel and drivetrain connected with some special custom connecting hardware, which is displayed on the right. Uh, once again, we're just acknowledging the fact that, you know, we started here, here's our first piece of hardware, uh, and you'll notice that it doesn't really change the route, which once again reiterates that some things you get right the first time, other things takes many, many tries. On this slide was a progress update from, I believe, two or three weeks into the internship. Uh, on the left side, we can see our first iteration of the powder distributor, and on the right was uh, the overall assembly that we had at the time. You notice things are very floaty. Uh, not everything's in place, and uh, and when it comes to engineering, not everything has to be in place right away. Uh, you work th through things as you go and kind of uh, modify where you are. You'll see this power distributor, this little gray system change quite a bit. Over on this side, we have our final model, including a right side, just kind of overall spin of the structure. Um, you can see all the colorful structures within it, the pink being the uh, little powder distributor and the green being our dust reservoir, is contained within our overall box. Um, of course, we want to make sure that we're hitting those design requirements and the overall dimensions of the project. Here we have a sectioned side view of the project. Uh, of course, the pink once again is our power distributor, the green, yellow, blue system over there would be our dust reservoir system. Uh, you can just get an overall premise of how everything looks together. Uh, once again, when we compare this to with our sketch, we can see how the project starts in which the power distributor uh, has the powder, it's scooped through the shaft, kind of bounces down to be evenly distributed in which it would be driven over through the reservoir, settle here through the fan system, out through the exhaust. Next, we are revisiting that first part that we've made. This custom connecting hardware didn't really change. The only thing added was a little bearing. Uh, once again, just reiterating those cool engineering facts of, you know, something's changed, something's don't, and uh, it'll look better once everything's all together. On this slide, we have a more isolated view of our powder distributor. Uh, this little pink structure is still within its own little area. You'll notice that shaft is like a little bent. Uh, we have our conveyor belt system in there. So just a, a little nice thing. And the, the cool part about having this rotating brush down here is that with this bent shaft, the powder being thrown into it might kind of bounce around and change velocity and positions in variable ways. Um, by having this little system over here, we can still ensure that it's always 100% of the time being e evenly distributed. Here we can get a closer look at that. Uh, we have our rotating brush in the purple and our little motor here in gray. Another thing that we need to acknowledge as engineers is mistakes. Uh, this motor right here is very, very close to this wheel and it would not pass any safety ins inspections whatsoever. Um, if we had given been given further time. Uh, this would, of course, be designed around and fixed, uh, perhaps by moving the system overall or covering it in some sort of cap that would prevent it from being knocked or damaged in any way. Um, however, you know, we have what it is now and uh, we're just acknowledging the uh, overall design flaw. Next over here, we have a close-up of our conveyor belt system. Uh, it does have custom attachment hardware. Uh, this would have special gears in which the conveyor belt would be kind of shifted upwards with that little scoop on a loop. Moving forward, we do have a more isolated view of our dust reservoir system. Uh, you can kind of see over here, it's a little difficult to see, we have the moving brushes that are on shoulder bolts on springs. Those just once again keep, keep in contact with the ground and make sure everything's agitated properly. Uh, once again, we can see our little hose in which it is covered in this very nice structure seen on the left side. Uh, we want to make sure everything's stable and nothing's going to be swinging around. 
Uh, meanwhile, inside here, we still have our yellow removable dust reservoir and our blue fan casing, uh, just to ensure nothing moves. And of course, our baffle system is fully modeled along with our little exhaust tapering outwards uh, system. Back here, we have a better view of our little ramp system in the back. Uh, you'll notice that it does not have a handle of any sort at the moment. Uh, and the reason for that is because we don't want that pressure plate to attempt to compress and get kind of stopped by that rigid structure. Uh, instead, we opted to use a ledge, as depicted on this right side. It's kind of sticking out from the overall system, uh, allowing for someone to kind of grab at that and pull at it to release that suction through the vacuum system. Uh, once again, this will be used as a ramp when uh, fully grabbed and pulled out. In this image, we have a top view of the overall project. You can see that we have two handles on either side for easy handling or maneuvering of the project. Uh, of course, if someone has to carry it somewhere, it should be easy to do. Uh, over in front here, we have a very large, very big red button. This is our emergency stop button. If this thing comes barreling at you with uncanny speeds, you want to make sure that you can stop the power uh, or if any other mishaps do occur. Uh, on top, we do have a perforated sheet. This can be replaced with a screen of any sort. Uh, it's only purpose just to serve so nothing will bounce into there or any parts would fall down. Uh, the tunnels do seem to have quite a bit of uh, debris lying around, so we just want to make sure that nothing's going to fall in there and damage our systems. Um, this depiction has a very nice clear image of our uh, electrical enclosure. Uh, this little purple thing on the side here is two 12 volt batteries. In the top left corner, we have the green thing right here. That is our step up converter. And this blue uh, box right here would be our computer. Those would work together to, of course, go to the power distribution panel or our fuse box. Uh, we have a variety of motor controllers in here just to kind of display that we could fit everything into this enclosure. Um, I didn't feel the need to model this in that much depth because I felt like the other workings were a little more important than the details of a battery. <laughs> Here we can see a little better view of our uh, panel system, our pressure plates. Uh, we can see the custom connecting hardware right here, our shoulder bolt and spring mechanism. And on top of it, you'll notice this hollow little cap. Uh, this is used so that if something were to bump into it, it can still compress properly. Uh, otherwise, it would hit just this little bolt instead and would not compress at all because it's a rigid structure that would not move. Uh, over on the right here, we can see some custom attachment hardware for our limit switch. Uh, which, of course, would be used uh, in conjunction with that panel to compress and let the robot know, hey, I'm hitting something. Over on the back here, we have a panel system once again uh, with custom holding hardware with those, once again, those caps over there. Uh, we just got a little close-up over here of it holding in that panel in place. Otherwise, that should be all, and uh, thank you very kindly for attending.